Welcome back to Driftwood Guitars. I'm Chris Alvarado and today we're going to talk about string action and things that affect the playability of your acoustic guitar. Check out this thing, man. I'm so excited about this. It's something I, I made on my CNC machine, and I think maybe we call it the Acoustic Guitar String Action Simulator. Um, it's a really cool little thing, I think, and I hope that I can use it in this video as a way to show you how there's four main things that can affect how your guitar is playable as far as the string height is concerned. Before we get going with this demonstration, I do want to cover some of the real basic things just in case some of you are, are just getting to know your guitar. Um, so we'll talk about some of the nomenclature. The first thing we'll, we'll be talking about a lot in this video is the nut, which is the piece of bone or plastic at the, at the uh, headstock to neck joint of your guitar. And it's what basically creates the zero fret mark for your guitar. The other thing that we're going to talk about is the saddle. Not to be confused with the bridge. The bridge is the dark, usually dark wood piece of wood that's glued to the top of your guitar. The saddle is the bone or plastic piece that's sitting inside of it, and it's usually about two millimeters to three millimeters wide. And it's what the strings go across and then break down into the bridge. Um, we are also going to be talking about the truss rod, which I actually have. I actually have a real truss rod here for you guys to see. The truss rod fits down inside the neck like this, and you can turn a wrench this way or that way, and it'll actually cause and allow you to create either a relief in the neck in this direction or a back bow in the neck in this direction. And as we'll talk about, you'll see why you would or wouldn't want to do those certain things. So those are the, the different things that we're going to be talking about, as well as, I guess the other thing would be the neck angle, which is kind of self-explanatory, but we'll hit it up anyway. Neck angle is how the neck is sitting in relation to the body. We'll talk about string gauge as well here in a bit, and that is actually the composition of what your strings are made out of and how large the diameter of them are. And depending on its diameter, it's actually going to exert a different amount of pull on your guitar. All right, now that I've gone over the five things that this model can do and things that we can change that'll affect the action of this string, uh, I think we'll just go over individual items. So right now, you can see that this is set up with, with really good playability. I, a well set up guitar should have very low action down here at the nut, usually about 12 thousandths, and we should be at about 80 thousandths to 110 thousandths, depending on you know, the high E or the low E string, at about the 12th to 14th fret. A neck should, as opposed to popular belief, a neck should have a little bit of relief in it because a string, when it vibrates, vibrates in an elliptical pattern. So we do need a little bit of bow in the neck right here. That gives the neck a little bit of clearance for the string to vibrate as when you push down on a fret, it has room to go like this without buzzing. The number one thing that I think that most people do is they get a guitar and it plays poorly. Usually when you get a guitar, it's either old or you bought it straight from the factory and it tends to have a, a higher than needed saddle. So that's kind of what we're representing here. A lot of the things that I've set this model up to do are exaggerated just so you guys can get a better visual reference. So here we have it set up with what would otherwise be a great setup guitar. 
other than the saddle height. So it may plays great down here and then you get up about to the fifth fret, suddenly you're having to really dig into the fretboard. And you would be right to think that I can lower the saddle. And in this particular case, all other things on the guitar, including the truss rod and the knot height and the neck angle are correct. So what we can do here is we can shave down the saddle of this guitar and get the action to where we want it. But what I always tell folks when you're, when you're assessing whether a guitar is playing right or wrong or if there's issues with it in buzzing or if it's too low or too high string action, that you should always start with the truss rod. So what we can do is pop this out which allows me to give this neck a little bit of wiggling room. So let's take that saddle back up to where it was, really high. And remember, I have this set up right now to simulate a really straight neck. So the action does seem high. But if you had this same exact guitar, you had the truss rod poorly adjusted, it would be maybe set up like this with a lot of back bow inside of it. And you can see the action's actually not so bad anymore. The, the saddle is still set up very high, and if I actually do it just by hand by pushing up on this truss rod even further, you have great playability all the way up to about the seventh fret, and suddenly the whole neck and fretboard drops off. By the time you get up here to the body joint, the action's terrible. But a lot of people spend most of their time down here, you know, the first through the fifth fret, and they go, okay, the guitar plays really great. But what they don't even realize is that the saddle is way too high down there, and that's why the guitar plays terribly from the 5th to 7th fret onwards. So when I'm doing an evaluation of a guitar, whether it's set up correctly or not, I always start with the truss rod. Um, the same can be said for if we had a perfectly set up saddle right at this height, and we had too much relief in the neck, we'd have the same sort of situation going on, but it would be really high action in the middle of the neck, with really low action up here near the body joint to the point where when you start fretting the strings kind of at the middle of the neck, it buzzes a lot because what you'll notice is that, that there's too much relief in the neck here and there's no room for this string to vibrate. It's banging on these strings up here. Mind you, the fingerboard extension would be glued down to the top right around there. So what some people might do in this situation is actually take the saddle down even further, which is the wrong thing to do because what it does is it does solve the problem up here of giving you better playability of the first through the, fr first through the fifth fret, but now you have nothing but string buzz down here. So that's why it's important that once again, the first thing you evaluate is your truss rod. And when I talk about having the truss rod right, what I usually mean on my guitars that I build, I keep it at about four thousandths of an inch. Um, I have, a Stuart McDonald neck relief gauge, but you can also use a straight edge rested straight on the neck and then use a feeler gauge at the 12th fret. Go for anywhere between five thousandths and ten thousandths of an inch um, of space between the straight edge and the top of the fret at the 12th fret. If you start with that, you can dial everything else in from that point. So moving on from the saddle over here to the nut end of the guitar, you can see that once again, I've got this set back up to the point where it's perfectly set up. And all I have to do is simply move this nut as if it was set up higher. And suddenly the guitar action is really, really high and it wouldn't play well. This is something that I find happens a lot with new guitars that you go buy brand new at the music store or from online. Um, the factories tend to set these things up a little higher than you normally would at the nut and a little higher than you would at the saddle. One of the biggest symptoms that you have your nut action too high is that the guitar really doesn't play well from the first to the fifth fret. You know, it seems like, it's, man, it's really hard to push this thing down when I'm doing like an open E major, open G major chord, especially when you're fretting at the first fret. Um, and you can see how just by raising that up a little bit, suddenly what was a perfectly set up guitar, suddenly it's going to take me a whole bunch more effort. And the closer I get to the nut, the harder it is for me to push down because it's, you're having a bigger break angle right there from the nut to the first fret. So the way that I do my setups is I usually do truss rod first, and then I do this, the nut second. I get that to where I want it. And then I evaluate whether or not I need to do anything with the saddle. As opposed to the saddle being the first thing that you tackle, it should probably be the last thing that you tackle. 
And let me just go through a couple of different ways where we could have a really poorly set up knot or a poorly set up saddle and still have really good playability at a certain spot on the neck just to kind of make you go, well, I hadn't really thought about that. Um, so let's do a setup where we have a high saddle and a high nut, but we're going to put a bunch of a bunch of back bow in the neck, which not all guitars have the ability to do um, both forward and back bow on their truss rod, but most new ones do. It's called a, um, a hot rod truss rod. So if we put a whole bunch of truss rod relief in this guitar, we'd be able to get it to the point where it plays halfway decently, but you'll notice that once we get past the fourth or fifth fret, suddenly there's a a big drop off. Um, so you could lower the saddle. You could lower the saddle all the way down and then still have too high of action at the nut and that same truss rod action would make you think, man, this guitar plays great, except for it plays terrible up here. And anything that you fret in this area of the neck is gonna cause a whole bunch of buzzing because once again, there's not any relief in the neck. You almost never wanna have back bow on the neck. Something that you should consider in part of your evaluation of whether your guitar is set up correctly, if it's not brand new, if it's, you know, five to 10, especially if it's older than 10 years old, is the neck angle. Uh, as opposed to electric guitars, especially bolt-ons like Strats and Tellys, um, that, that you can pull the neck on and off really quickly. An acoustic guitar's neck angle is set and set hard, other than Taylor's. And as you can see, when I change the neck angle just ever so slightly, just one degree or two degrees, look how much the string height is changing down here. It's, it's quite drastic. What tends to happen in old guitars over the years on a, on a standard light gauge set of strings, you have about 140 to 160 pounds of tension. And that neck over time starts to pull, 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 pull this way. So you, you kind of lose the geometry in this area. And what happens is you end up with too high of string height down here. And then so somebody along the way takes it to a repairman and he lowers the saddle height and that fixes it for a couple years and then the neck pulls up even harder. Next thing you know, you've bought this, you know, 1962 Gibson J45 and man, does it play terrible. So the next thing a lot of people do is they'll shave down the saddle so that they can get some, or save down the whole bridge so that they can get a little bit of more saddle protrusion. And that doesn't fix the problem. So the way that you would evaluate whether your neck angle is straight, you should be able to put a straight edge on your, on your neck on top of the frets. And that straight edge should come out and touch just the very tip top of your bridge. The bridge being the wooden part that the saddle sits inside of. So if the neck angle is really far off, especially on older guitars, what'll happen a lot of times is you put a straight edge on the neck and it touches down halfway down the bridge, or even at, even worse, it'll touch at the top of the, on the top of the guitar. Um, that's that's a very good indication that you need to do a neck reset, which can be costly. Um, if you have a Taylor guitar, the nice thing is that is actually just a quick, easy bolt-on neck. The new technology necks or the NT necks are held on with two bolts here, and there's two bolts here. That whole neck can come off. And if you go to stumac.com, they actually sell shim kits. That, it, um, that are numbered, you know, there's a 0.1 degree, 0.2 degrees, all the way up to, I think, a full degree of neck angle. You pop in those shims and suddenly, boom, your neck is fixed. And it's something that you can actually do yourself. It may void the warranty. I can't be held responsible for that. You have been warned. Um, but if you also notice that whenever my neck angle is off, possibly in the wrong direction, the, the backwards tilting direction, um, which can happen with, with some custom built guitars, or just some random guitars from the factory that just kind of maybe were put together a little bit off or have maybe been sitting in, in poor humidity conditions, either too dry or too hot, the geometry can get off. So what will happen in those situations is you'll have, you'll have somebody along the way put a high nut on it. And just to get the guitar so that it plays decently, this one, in order to make it play well, I'd have to have an incredibly high nut and an incredibly high saddle. And the guitar would play pretty decently, but because of the high saddle or the high nut, it would play poorly once again from the first to the first to the fifth fret. And it would play kind of okay up here. The real sweet spot would be in the middle. So you really need to pay attention to not only is the action high, but where is it high or where is it low? Is it high at the, the top end of the neck? Is it high at the low end of the neck? Is it playing great in the middle or poorly in the middle? 
that really does give you a good indication. And once again, you can see why the truss rod really is the king here. The other thing that I really want to illustrate, but that I'm really excited that this model can illustrate, is what happens when you go from one gauge of strings to the other, or even one um, composition of strings to the other. You might go from a nickel based string to a phosphor bronze, or from an 80-20 phosphor bronze to a pure phosphor bronze. And you need to pay attention to the back of your package of strings because it tells you exactly how many pounds of tension are being pulled on the guitar. And if you're using Deodario light gauge strings and suddenly you went to a Deodario medium gauge strings, that's going to cause about 30 to 40 pounds more tension being pulled on your neck as well as the top of your guitar and the geometry is going to change. So the way that I've got this set up with the green pin in and just the neck angle pin in, I can actually pull up on this, which is simulating what happens when we, when we give you a, a harder gauge string. It actually creates more pull on, that, on the headstock and it pulls up this way. So if this is set up as if we had our light gauge on, we haven't changed anything else with the nut and saddle. Suddenly we string it up with some mediums because we go, man, this guitar is just, I wish it had more, more balls to it or I wish it had more sound. Uh, I wish it was louder. So we string it up with some mediums and this is what happens when you put those mediums on. If you'll notice what happened there in the middle of the neck was quite drastic. It's as if I'd gone in there and adjusted the truss rod a whole bunch. Suddenly you're going, man, it sounds great, but it plays like crap. So what you need to do if you're going to change out your strings is you need to compensate for that with a truss rod adjustment because so we'll go back to the light gauge strings. Let's put those medium gauge strings on and what we can do to fix that is just give it a truss rod adjustment and put it, let's see if we can find the right spot. We'll put it right around there. I can't do it with the pin, but if we did a truss rod adjustment with those higher gauge strings, we can get that guitar playing absolutely perfect again. But you can't expect to go from, from a mediums to lights or, or mediums to heavies or vice versa, any change of strings without there being um, drastic changes in the playability of the guitar. So uh, that, that's a really cool way that this, this model ended up working to be able to show you how different tensions and, and materials of strings can really, really cause quite a bit of torquing on the guitar. One other thing that a lot of people don't think about is how humidity can affect the playability of their guitar. And it's something that in drastic situations you should consider when evaluating whether your guitar is playing right or not. Um, if you live in the north, especially out west, you should consider the dry air. And if you live down here in the south like we do in Florida, it's the hot air and the, the humid air that can cause your guitar to play poorly. So. As you may have noticed, like when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, the, the wood's warped a lot of the times. And, and if you were to see that same piece of wood on one day where it's humid versus another day where it's dry, it would be changed drastically in how it's shaped. So the same thing applies to an acoustic guitar, especially on the top. It's usually made out of some sort of spruce or cedar. And those woods, they're also cut in a quarter sawn direction which really makes them prone to um, humidity fluctuations. So the top of the guitar is actually not flat, it's got a slight bow to it. And when we did our setup, that bow was taken into consideration. If you were to suddenly go from dry to humid, the top of that guitar would probably bow up, which would cause your action to, to become quite a bit higher. This can be taken care of by doing like a seasonal truss rod adjustment. If we were to take that truss rod and push it up just a little bit, then suddenly the guitar plays well again. If you're out west and in the north in the winter time and suddenly it's snowing and it's 4% humidity out, A, keep your guitar in the case because it'll prevent this from happening. But if you don't have it in the case and it's hanging on the wall, it's probably going to dry the top out as well as the neck and it's going to sink the whole top down slightly, which is going to cause your guitar to buzz like crazy. Your neck's going to go either this way or that way, depending on what it's made out of and what it wants to do. Because once again, it kind of they kind of do their own thing. But if we were to lower, simulate the belly coming down on your guitar and it's bowing really poorly, one thing that you can do is either have a new saddle made just for the winter time that brings the action up to help compensate for that. And you could swap them out from one season to the other, or you could do a truss rod adjustment that's going to give you a little bit more relief. That's probably not going to fix it 100% because you're still going to have some buzzing up here. But it is an option. But don't freak out just because it's your guitar's buzzing like crazy and it's January. 
most likely it's a humidity situation and you should probably put the guitar either in its case or get a nice humidifier. There are many, many of them on the market. Planet Waves I know makes a really great one. You should be paying attention to the humidity conditions of your guitar. Usually those are between 30% and 50% humidity. Your guitar is going to be really happy. And, and you can do just that to make it happy again if it is playing poorly and you do kind of go, oh wow, yeah, it either has been really humid or really dry here. You should put it in a case or somewhere where it can kind of get back to an equilibrium in that, you know, 30 to 50% humidity range. Leave it there for a few days and 90% of the time when you pull it out, the guitar is going to be back to its great playing state. So that's something that I noticed happened a lot when I used to do repair work was that people would come to me all upset, all in a, all in a huff about how their guitar went from playing great to terrible. Uh, honestly, a lot of them, just I would hang them on the wall and call them up five days later, tell them to come pick up their guitar uh, without charging them, and, and they'd be like, wow, this guitar plays great, and I didn't even do anything to it other than leave it in my shop, which is properly humidified. Um, so I just definitely wanted to hit on that. Remember that these guitars are very complex, which does seem, it does seem simple. It seems like there's a neck with a box and some strings on it, and you strum it, and that's pretty much the end of it. These are incredibly complex uh, pieces of engineering, and there's a whole list of things that can cause the guitar to play well or poorly. I hope that some of the things that we talked about here can really shine a light on, on, on four or five of the different basic things that can affect playability of your guitar. I do want to talk about some of the items that you should buy if, if maintaining your own acoustic guitar is something that you want to do. The first one would be a really nice high quality 24 inch um, straight edge. Don't just get a standard ruler. You do need to get a high quality machined straight edge and you can get this at Stuart McDonald. This is once again what we would rest on here to evaluate whether the neck is straight or not, as well as to check for our neck angle. Um, you can also, if you're really wanting to get something nice, I would recommend this Stuart McDonald neck relief gauge. This has got a dial caliper on it and it allows you to set it on the neck. And when you're doing your truss rod adjustments to really be able to dial in to the thousands of an inch with accuracy and know exactly what the numbers are. So you can get one of those at Stumac and then also a feeler gauge set. You don't have to get this at Stumac. They sell them there, but you can also go to most hardware stores and they'll sell those as well. If you just had those three things as well as the correct truss rod wrench for your particular guitar, um, you're well on your way to be able to set up and just maintain your guitar's playability. And uh, I, I really hope that, that some of the things that we talked about here empower you to be able to do that. Um, yeah, I hope that this helped out. I'm really excited about this little model. I spent the whole day making it. It may seem a little silly, but um, it's really cool, I think. You know, it gives you a way to, to visualize all the things that are going on. And uh, if you guys want to see me do some more things with this model, I'll be happy to do that. And I hope you have a great time. And thanks so much for checking out my video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and you hit the like button. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.